tectites are gravel-sized bodies composed of black, green, brown or gray natural glass formed from terrestrial debris ejected during meteorite impacts. They generally range in size from millimeters to centimeters. Millimeters-sized tectites are known as microtectites. Tectites are characterized by a fairly homogeneous composition, an extremely low content of water and other volatiles, an abundance of lechatellurite, a general lack of microscopic crystals known as microlites and chemical relation to the local bedrock or local sediments, the distribution within geographically extensive strewn fields. Characteristics. Although tectites are superficially similar to some terrestrial volcanic glasses, they have unusual distinctive physical characteristics that distinguish them from such glasses. First, they are completely glassy and lack any microlites or phenocrysts, unlike terrestrial volcanic glasses. Second, although high in silica, the bulk chemical and isotopic composition of tectites is closer to those of of shales and similar sedimentary rocks and quite different from the bulk, chemical and isotopic composition of terrestrial volcanic glasses. Third, tectites contain virtually no water, unlike terrestrial volcanic glasses. Fourth, the flow banding within tectites often contains particles and bands of lechatellurite, which are not found in terrestrial volcanic glasses. Finally, a few tectites contain partly melted inclusions of shocked and unshocked mineral grains, i.e., quartz, apatite, and zircon, as well as coesite. The difference in water content can be used to distinguish tectites from terrestrial volcanic glasses. When heated to the melting point, terrestrial volcanic glasses will turn into a foamy glass because of the content of water and other volatiles. Unlike terrestrial volcanic glass, a tectite will produce only a few bubbles at most when heated to its melting point. Because of its its much lower water and other volatiles content. Classification On the basis of morphology and physical characteristics, tectites have traditionally been divided into four groups. The tectites which have been found on land have traditionally been subdivided into three groups. Splash form tectites, aerodynamically shaped tectites, and mongnong type tectites. Splash form and aerodynamically shaped tectites are only differentiated on the basis of their appearance and some of their physical characteristics. Splash form tectites are centimeter sized tectites that are shaped like spheres, ellipsoids, teardrops, dumbbells, and other forms characteristic of isolated molten bodies. Bodies. They are regarded as having formed from the solidification of rotating liquids, and not atmospheric ablation. Aerodynamically shaped tectites, which are mainly part of the Australasian strewn field, a splash form tectites which display a secondary ring of flange. The secondary ring of flange is argued as having been produced during the high-speed re-entry and ablation of a solidified splash form tectite tectite into the atmosphere. Mongnong tectites are typically larger, greater than 10 cm in size and 24 kg in weight irregular and layered tectites. They have a chunky, blocky appearance, exhibit a layered structure with abundant vesicles, and contain mineral inclusions such as zircon, badilite, chromite, rutile, corundum, cristobalite and coesite. Microtectites, the fall group of tectites are tectites that are less than one millimeter in size. They exhibit a variety of shapes ranging from spherical to dumbbell, disc, oval, and teardrop. The color of microtectites ranges from colorless and transparent to yellowish and pale brown. 
They frequently contain bubbles and let chatelierite inclusions. Microtectites are typically found in deep sea sediments that are of the same ages as those of the foreknown strewn fields. Microtectites of the Australasian strewn field have also been found on land within Chinese layers deposits, and in sediment filled joints and decimeter sized weathering pits developed within glacially eroded granite outcrops of the Victoria Land, Transantarctic Mountains, and Antarctica occurrence. Since 1963, it has been known that the majority of known tectites occur only within four geographically extensive strewn fields. The Australasian, Central European, Ivory Coast, and North American strewn fields. As summarized by Cobalt, the tectites within each strewn field are related to each other with respect to the criteria of petrological, physical, and chemical properties as well as their age. In addition, three of the four strewn fields have been clearly linked with impact craters using those same criteria. Recognized types of tectites grouped according to the known strewn fields their associated craters and ages are Australasian strewn field, Australites, Indochinites, Rizalite. Central European strewn field Germany age 15 million years Maldives Ivory Coast strewn field Ghana age 1 million year Ivorites North American Paris United States age 34 million years Bedia sites Georgia rights dot Comparing the number of known impact craters versus the number of known strewn fields, Artemiva considered essential factors such as the crater must exceed a certain diameter to produce distal ejecta, and that the event must be relatively recent, limiting to diameters 10 kilometers or more and younger than 50 mar. The study yielded a list of 13 candidate craters, of which the youngest eight are given below. Preliminary papers in the late 1970s suggested either Zarmanchen or Elzhijitchen as the source of the Australasian strewn field. Povenmar and others have proposed the existence of an additional tectite strewn field, the Central American strewn field. Evidence for this reported tectite strewn field consists of tectites recovered from western Belize in the area of the villages of Bullet Tree Falls, Santa Familia and Billy White. This area lies about 55 kilometers east-southeast of Tikal where 13 tectites, two of which were dated as being 820,000 years old, of unknown origin were found. A limited amount of evidence is interpreted as indicating that the proposed Central American strewn field likely covers Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua and possibly parts of southern Mexico. It is speculated that the hypothesized Pantasma impact crater in northern Nicaragua might be the source of these tectites. Age The ages of tectites from the four strewn fields have been determined using radiometric dating methods. The age of Maldives, a type of tectite found in Czech Republic, was determined to be 14 million years, which agrees well with the age determined for the Nordling Arise crater by radiometric dating of Suvite. Similar agreements exist between tectites from the North American strewn field and the Chesapeake Bay impact crater and between tectites from the Ivory Coast strewn field and the Lake Bosom Twi crater. Ages of tectites have usually been determined by either the KR method, fission track dating, the RR technique, or combination of these techniques. Origins Terrestrial source theory The overwhelming consensus of Earth and planetary scientists is that tectites consist of terrestrial debris that was ejected during the formation of an impact crater. During the extreme conditions created by an hypervelocity meteorite impact, near-surface terrestrial sediments and rocks were either melted, vaporized, or 
some combination of these and ejected from an impact crater. After ejection from the impact crater, the material formed millimeter to centimeter sized bodies of molten material, which as they re-entered the atmosphere, rapidly cooled to form tectides that fell to earth to create a layer of distal ejector hundreds of thousands of kilometers away from the impact site. The terrestrial source for tectites is supported by well-documented evidence. The chemical and isotopic composition of tectites indicates that they are derived from the melting of silica-rich crustal and sedimentary rocks, which are not found on the Moon. In addition, some tectites contain relict mineral inclusions that are characteristic of terrestrial sediments and crustal and sedimentary source rocks. Also, three of the four tectite strewn fields have been linked by their age and chemical and isotopic composition to known impact craters. A number of different geochemical studies of tectites from the Australasian strewn field concluded that these tectites consist of melting. Jurassic sediments or sedimentary rocks that were weathered and deposited about 167 ma ago. The geochemistry suggests that the source of Australasian tectites is a single sedimentary formation with a narrow range of stratigraphic ages, close to 170 ma more or less. This effectively refutes multiple impact hypotheses, although it is widely accepted that the formation of an widespread distribution of tectites requires the intense melting of near-surface sediments and rocks at the impact site and the following high-velocity ejection of this material from the impact crater. The exact processes involved remain poorly understood. One possible mechanism for the formation of tectites is by the jet of highly shocked and superheated melt during the initial contact compression stage of impact crater formation. Alternatively, various mechanisms involving the dispersal of shock melted material by an expanding vapor plume, which is created by a hypervelocity impact, have been used to explain the formation of tectites. Any mechanism by which tectites are created must explain chemical data that suggest that parent material from which tectites were created came from near surface rocks and sediments at an impact site. In addition, the scarcity of known strewn fields relative to the number of identified impact craters indicate that very special and rarely met circumstances are required in order for tectites to be created by a meteorite impact. Non-terrestrial source theories Though the meteorite impact theory of tectite formation is widely accepted, there has been considerable controversy about their origin in the past. In contrast to a terrestrial impact source for tectites, it was argued that tectites consist of material that was ejected from the Moon by major hydrogen-driven lunar volcanic eruptions and then drifted through space to later fall to Earth as tectites. The major proponents of the lunar origin of tectites include NASA scientist John A. O'Keefe, NASA aerodynamicist Dean R. Chapman, meteorite and tectite collector Daryl Futrell, and longtime tectite researcher Hal Povenmire. For the 1950s to the 1990s O'Keefe argued for the lunar origin of tectites based upon the chemical I, E, rare earth, isotopic, and bulk, composition and physical properties. Chapman used complex orbital computer models and extensive wind tunnel tests to argue that the so-called Australasian tectites originated from the Ross eject array of the large crater Tycho on the moon's near side. O'Keefe, Povenmire, and Futrell claimed on the basis of behavior of glass melts that the homogenization, which is called fining, of silica melts that characterize tectites could not be explained by the terrestrial impact theory. They also argued that the terrestrial impact theory could not explain the vesicules and extremely low water and other volatile content of tectites. Futrell also reported the presence of microscopic internal features within tectites, which argued for a volcanic origin. 
at one time. Theories advocating the lunar origin of tektites enjoyed considerable support as part of a spirited controversy about the origin of tektites that occurred during the 1960s, starting with the publication of research concerning lunar samples returned from the Moon. The consensus of Earth and planetary scientists shifted in favor of theories advocating a terrestrial impact versus lunar volcanic origin. For example, one problem with the lunar origin theory is that the arguments for it that are based upon the behavior of glass melts use data from pressures and temperatures that are vastly uncharacteristic of and unrelated to the extreme conditions of hypervelocity impact. In addition, various studies have shown that hypervelocity impacts are likely quite capable of producing low volatile melts with extremely low water content. The consensus of Earth and planetary scientists regards the chemical I, E, rare earth, isotopic, and bulk composition evidence as decisively demonstrating that tektites are derived from terrestrial crustal rock, I, E, sedimentary rocks, that that are unlike any known lunar crust. In 1960, another non-terrestrial hypothesis for the origin of tektites was proposed by the Russian-born mathematician Mattis M. Agrest, who suggested that tektites were formed as a result of nuclear blasts produced by extraterrestrial beings. He used this as an argument to support his paleocontact hypothesis. 